Well, happy Sunday, everybody, and good morning. Good morning. Let's everybody say hello to one another. Greet someone next to you this morning. Introduce yourself to someone new. If you're on live stream, if you're watching at home or listening in your car or wherever you are, we welcome you this morning, and we are very happy that you've joined us. We're going to start our morning with some worship. I invite everyone to stand. Okay. All right. We'll get us started here. <laughs> I searched the world.
um, a guest speaker this morning, a guest pastor, and we will be welcoming welcoming him shortly. I'm getting tongue tied with all this singing, but um, let's continue our worship.
this first song this morning. Dear God, our Heavenly Father, we just thank you this morning that we have this opportunity to meet in a house of worship, in a house that's dedicated to you, God. We ask that everyone here just look at the cross this morning when they open their eyes from prayer and, and just lay all their burdens at your feet, Lord, but put everything else out of their minds so that all we focus on is you. We get to meet together a few times a week, Lord, and we want to make it count. We just ask you, God, that the words this morning that come from the message are the words that are on your heart, Lord, and that we learn what you want us to learn and take away what you want us to take away. We ask you, God, to be with those at home that are unable to come into church. We ask you, God, to let them have church right there in their living rooms or wherever they're at, Lord, that no one misses out on what you have for us this morning. We ask you, God, just to touch those that need your healing touch this morning. We ask you, please, God, to just continue to worship and just uh, let it be pleasing to this is one everybody knows, so this will be easier to sing for everyone this morning. Lord, I need you, and don't we all need him? Amen? Yeah. 
Heavenly Father, God, we, we need you. Lord, every, every single hour, every single breath, Lord, everything, we, we need you. Lord, and I pray that those are not just words that, that we casually sing, but I pray that that is and becomes our prayer for every single minute of every single day. Because, Lord, we, we desperately need you. Lord, we need you to come and to fill this space. We need you to come and fill our hearts. We need you to forgive us of our sin. So, Father God, I just, I just pray this morning, Lord, that you would just continue to be the faithful God. That you continue to be the one that we can turn to, the one that hears us when we pray, the, the one, Lord, that, that continues to provide for our needs, Lord, and our needs are many. Lord, um, there are so many that are here and that are watching the live stream, Lord, that, um, that just need your touch. Lord, we just need your presence. We need your encouragement. We need your hope. Lord, we need, we need our needs met. And so, God, you know our stories. You know the situations that we find ourselves in today. God, you know our longings, our deepest longings for you. And so, God, I pray that in these moments as we gather together, Lord, that we would turn our attention and our focus to you. God, where does our help come from? It comes from you, Lord. You are our creator. You are our God. You are our sustainer. And so, God, we look to you in this new season that we find ourselves in as a church, Lord, as we are in this new time of just praying and seeking where you're leading us as a church, God. We're praying for who you're going to send us as a, our next lead pastor, God. And we just want to say, Lord, right here at the start, God, just as we have trusted you in the past, Lord, we trust you right now. We know that you are the God who goes with us. You are the God who has already won the battle, as we sung about this morning. You already know the full picture. And so, Lord, we trust you in that because you are the faithful one. Lord, may we take peace in that as we discern, as we look, as we pray, as we step up to new challenges, as we, as we all play the part, Lord, that you would have us to play. Lord, I pray that you would unite us as a church, God. And I pray also that you would be with our church board and our church leaders, Lord, as, um, as everybody just continues to seek your leadership, your direction, God, where, where your spirit is wanting to take us uh, to next, God. Um, we don't know where that's going to lead us, but Lord, we trust you and we, we say we need you in this time. And so God, just continue to show us the ways that you want us to be as uh, individuals, Lord, but also as your church, Lord, in this community and in this world, God. Um, Lord, I pray, um, Lord, that you would just set our hearts on fire. Lord, I pray that um, as I am, have been encouraged over the last week or so, God, as I've seen these reports of revival breaking out at Asbury, God, and, and I've, as I've seen um, just hearts being poured out and, and sins being confessed to you, Lord, um, I'm encouraged that, that you are at work in our nation, that you are in, at work in our young people's lives, God. You are at work here. And so, Lord, I pray, God, that, um, that the same passion, that your spirit, that we would catch, catch wind of it, that we would breathe in your spirit, Lord, that we would be led by you, that, that we would confess our sins to you, that we would we would get real. We would pursue you with this deep passion, God, this intimate passion for you. And Lord, I pray that you would meet us because you are moving and you are wanting to do something new. And so, Lord, we say again that we need you. We want you. We ask that you would just pour down in, in this space. We pray that you would use us, not just, not just to have this spiritual moment, but Lord, that you would call us out into our communities, into this places that are dark right now, but Lord, I pray that you would uh, light these places up, Lord, and that people would come to know you as their Lord and Savior. So God, thank you for uh, 
this day, this uh, first Sunday, um, where we can just come and worship you, that we can come and encourage one another, we can hear a message from your word this morning, and I pray uh, for Dr. Norm as he comes and as he preaches this morning, Lord, just comfort him, be with him, and use him mightily, and may our hearts be open to what it is that you want to say. So Lord, Holy Spirit, would you move in our time together, we give it to you, and we pray all this in the powerful, and the holy, and the precious name of Jesus, amen. Amen. Well, good morning. It's good to, good to see everybody here this morning, and for those on the live stream, we're glad that you're here. Uh, before uh, we invite our guest uh, preacher up this morning, I uh, just wanted to share a few announcements with us, um, and actually before I do that, we want to go ahead and uh, let our kiddos go, and so if there's any kids uh, as they're walking by you, if you want to give them a high five, and, uh, and be praying for them, and uh, we, we love, love our kids, and we're, we're thankful for our teachers that are going to be down there, but uh, we, are, we are blessed to have, have these little ones with us. All right, well, um, as always, we have Sunday school classes right after service here, and so that is for all ages, so the kids, um, they go downstairs, the teens meet in the teen teen room, and, uh, and then we have two adult classes, one that meets in room 202, and also downstairs in the fellowship hall. So again, if you're not already plugged into one of those or a small group th throughout the week, I'd encourage you just to, to stick around and, and jump in, and uh, let's just seek the Lord together. Let's grow in our relationships one, with one another and with the Lord. Um, in the back, uh, there are two offering boxes, so if you have your tithes or offerings, you can, you can put those there. Um, also, you can give online through our app or our website. You can give uh, electronically through that as well. Um, but we thank you for just your faithfulness and giving um, to the Lord and to this church and, and all that we are striving to do together. Um, this Saturday, um, we're excited because uh, it is the coldest night of the year. So um, there's going to be uh, places all around the USA and up in Canada that are doing this as well. Um, but we are doing it here locally. Um, we're partnering with Reach Cold Weather Shelter. And so some of you have already signed up and are planning on coming out to walk out over at HCC uh, this week. And so um, I'm going to be there. I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be a great time. Um, as we're walking around, we're going to just be praying for those um, who are experiencing homelessness right now, praying for their situations. Um, but there's, if you're not able to come out um, and, and do that, we would invite you to, to, if you feel led to, um, to give towards that. Um, all those proceeds will go to REACH and will make a difference there. And so as a church, we're committed to tr uh, trying to raise $2,000. So um, if you want to sponsor one of, the, one of those who are walking, we, um, we would love, love for that. Um, but this is going to be just a great time to be able to be a blessing um, to our community once again through REACH. Uh, we also, um, I forgot my baby bottle. Um, let me grab it. I wanted to have a prop this morning. So uh, baby bottles, so some of you have already grabbed these. So what the goal with these are is that we would fill this with coins or maybe a check or some cash, and this would all go to our Hagerstown Area Pregnancy Center. And so um, this is another great way that we are trying to be a blessing and, and make a difference in our community. And so I um, wanted to let you know that we are looking at bringing these back next Sunday, okay? So if you haven't already grabbed one and you'd like to do so, um, they are out on uh, just the reception desk, uh, right out in the, in the hallway, so make sure you grab one of those, or if you already grabbed one, make sure you bring it back by next Sunday. I already saw some of them in the office, so way to go if you overachievers who brought them in early, but uh, thanks for making a difference there. That's great. Um, and then for all the men, we've been announcing this for a little bit, but uh, we have the Men's Ignite Conference that's coming up on March 10th and 11th down in Lynchburg, Virginia, and so... Uh, that's going to be a great time together. So if you have not signed up yet, uh, sign up. Come, come let us know. Let me know. Let Tim Clip, let my dad, Keith Little know. Um, and we will we'll get you all set up with that, okay? Um, I will say that if you want the super early bird extended registration deadline discount, that's a lot of, that's a mouthful. But what it means is save some money and sign up before this Friday, okay? So sign up before this Friday and you'll get the, get the discount. Let us know that you're coming and uh, we'll join together and be, be encouraged 
um, as men. Um, also, I think this is my last announcement. Last announcement, so uh, Operation Christmas Child time again. You're like, didn't we just do that? Yes, we did, but we are, we are going to be collecting items every single month uh, for up until Christmas um, that are going to go in the Operation Christmas Child boxes. We're going to look at uh, putting together 100 um, for this year, and so um, this month, um, in beginning in March, we are looking for bright colored bandanas, okay? So nothing boring. We want, we want bright colored bandanas, okay? So, um, so all the colors, if you're at the store and want to grab some, bring them on in, okay? We're looking for 100 of those this next month. So that's our goal. Again, all of these things, we are we're striving to make a difference, right? We're, we're called to, to be the church, and so we're looking for ways to make a difference. So I encourage you to jump in. Um, and, and be a part any way that you can. All right, enough with me. I want to um, want to introduce to you a very special uh, pastor, leader on our district, but I, I want to lead with a very special friend of mine, um, Dr. Norm Huffman uh, at the district. It's, um, you know, it's not too often, maybe once or twice a year, that we, can, uh, we get a gather for worship together, and so it's always something that we look forward to, and this happens to be an extra, extra time, and so we're, we're delighted to have, have Dr. Norm come and, and preach. So he is um, the district secretary for the Mid-Atlantic District, and also uh, within that role also serves as our assistant district superintendent. So uh, we, are, we are delighted to have him join with us. I know um, you will be blessed by him. He's such a great guy and um, just a man of, man of the Lord, and I, I know you'll be encouraged. So let's, let's receive uh, the Lord, his message, and let's, uh, let's welcome him as he comes this morning. Well, it's very kind. Uh, Dr. Bowser often reminds us that you're not nearly as bad as people say you are, but you're also not as good as sometimes they say you are. So that was, that's very kind, uh, and I'm thankful, really thankful to be to be here with you. It's a great honor. Uh, I've been here at the church a few different times and uh, over the last several years and, and prior to that, Dave McPherson, we were talking, we kind of overlapped. I was at Baltimore First, which is now Crossroads, for about a decade before this role and, and he was there for many, many years and uh, so it's great to see friends. Some of you I recognize, I, don't, I may not know your names, but at Team Day or Camp or, or different events throughout the district. So. It's good. It's good to be with you. I also was uh, very thankful. First of all, I should say, if I get a little distracted, I feel like I'm doing a Peloton, you know, uh, one of those classes. I've, so, uh, but uh, last week, a week ago yesterday, I was able to be with some of you, and uh, as you celebrated the ministry and life uh, of, of how he has contributed, your pastor Steve and Pam Johnson. It just so happened that uh, it wasn't you know, wasn't planned this way, that later, uh, this, or earlier this week, I had lunch with a previous pastor you had to combine 40 plus years of leadership here at Hagerstown Church of the Nazarene. And uh, it was interesting, after I left, I was thinking about the fact that as amazing as these individuals are, as lucky and blessed as you have been, that I know both of them would say and believe that the best is yet to come for Hagerstown Church of the Nazarene. I know that there can be mixed emotions, and, and I would hope that in a morning like this, the, the week after Pastor Steve um, has left, and that there may be some of you that you just have that personality, that type that you're excited about the next, and, and you're just ready, and, and who knows, it doesn't have anything to do with the previous pastor, but you're just excited, like what's gonna happen? And then there's some of you that are probably kind of dreading apprehensive. You may be sad. And I would guess that most of us fall into the category of mix. Like, we're excited because we know that God is going to open and reveal himself in mighty ways, but then there's also the sadness. And I have been, just to let you know, I have been at churches where the pastor who has been there for a significant amount of time has left. As a lay person, as a board member, and certainly as a staff person, and now I, I work, I get to work and be a part of churches that are going through that, and I get a chance to connect with you. And I will tell you that from my personal experience, this is, is an opportunity for the Lord to refine and define who we are as a people. 
that we are not waiting for the next leader to step into what God is doing, to be on mission with God. No, he has called us to be faithful for whoever stands here week in and week out. And so I, I hope that you know that the mixed feelings that you may have are normal. I hope that you know that there are some that, that are, will struggle more and, and we, we are just patient and, and loving and, and hope to affirm and, and let them know that God is on the throne and, and that he is faithful in all of our circumstances. I also know that for those of you who are feeling uh, sad and just uncertain, that part of who we are as people, the intimacy that we have with one another is that we have shared experiences. And so inevitably, over the last 20 years, you have had shared experiences of birthdays and celebrations and weddings, and maybe you've sat in, in hospital rooms. And I remember someone shared last week that when their spouse had passed away and they had called Pastor Steve and he had gone and he had sat with them. And, and, and those are things that, that you can't put words and there's no value. I mean, you just can't put a value on that, but those are significant times that you will always appreciate and value. And yet, I think that it is helpful for us in the church to instead of thinking of, you know, we have this next season, and Pastor Kevin, you mentioned it, it is the new season, but rather than, okay, we're shutting this door, but we're, no, rather we're building, we're standing on the shoulders of those who came before us. For those of you who have grown up in the church and been a part of the church, you know that there are transitions that occur. I am a product of the church, good or bad. I was raised in the church, I think mostly good. I, I am very thankful and blessed to be raised in the church, and yet I can see how God has used women and men for his ministry. As I was sitting worshiping today, and, and I'll tell you, I, I was just blessed. I'm so thankful for the worship team and the time you've spent and the energy allowing us to come into worship. I, I was recalling growing, as I mentioned, growing up in the church, and I grew up in, in North Pole, Alaska. It's about 14 miles south from Fairbanks, Alaska. People say, they'll take cruises to Alaska, and they'll say, oh yeah, we've been to Alaska. I say, where have you been? We've been to Juneau. I'm like, that's not really Alaska. But if you've been there, and that's the, I mean, technically it is, but if you go to the interior, that's, uh, that's Alaska. But I lived in North Pole, Alaska, grew up there in a little church, and uh, my grandparents and parents, we went there Sunday morning, oftentimes Sunday evening and Wednesday evening. It was a very basic uh, church building. It was log. And you'd walk in, and there would be a couple classrooms off to the left. And to the right, you actually walked into the, the back of the sanctuary. And it had two, it had one aisle and pews on both sides. And what might distinguish this, I'll tell you, if you grew up in a small church, this may ring a little tr more true to you than um, if that has not been your experience. But if you walked in and you got there before church in time, you would notice that on the second or third row, I, I, again, I, this is, I was four, five, six, seven years old. The th second or third row from the front, there outside the, uh, the pews, there was a folding chair. It stuck out. And this was Mrs. Smith's chair because the pews were hard, you know, and, and so she, as a young kid, I probably thought she, I mean, I visioned her being 100, but she, I'm sure she was not. I'm sure she was, you know, at least 70s, early 80s, but as a kid, and um, so she had her padding, but if you came, if you got there early, you would notice that there was eight or ten kids that would be lining up from her church down the, or from her chair down the aisle, and you probably guess if you've grown up in a small church, she was handing out candy, butterscotch candy. And as I reflect upon that time, I'm reminded of the fact that what she was doing was she was creating space. She was inviting us to the table, to her table. These relationships that, that are formed. And I'm guessing that many of you have, if you've grown up in the church, or maybe you haven't grown up in the church, but you have experiences, you have stories such as that. I recall uh, as a young child being surrounded by the saints of the church, intentionally giving back to the younger generations. Now, this was much more than rituals or traditions, but what they were doing was they, was they were developing spiritual disciplines in my life. They were developing opportunities for us to engage, for they were modeling what it meant to be faithful servants of the church, of their families, and most importantly, of their God. We were taught and reminded that the people that we sat with, that we grew up with, those that you were sitting around here today, this morning, 
that our objective, our goal is that we will be, spend eternity with one another. I don't know if you've thought about that, but if you're having any conflict, I hope I hope we figure it out because part of that process is refining and defining who we are as we become holy people, as we continue to work on our, as we may use the term, progressive sanctification, as we continue to work toward being who God has called us to be. As I mentioned, as we become on mission with God, for there were these lessons, it was this modeling in what I would view as a therapeutic community that allows us to come in with all of our challenges and just love on us. It's these relationships that we have that refine who we are and and call us to a a calling, calling us to maybe a higher standard, call us to act and, and behave differently, a different mindset, if you will. And so as I think about last week and us all being together and Saturday night and all the tables that were here, as I, as I think about what it means to be a part of a church that loves its neighbor and loves the stranger, I'm, I go back to this imagery of a table. What does it mean to have shared experiences with one another? You see, the table, it's, a, it's an interesting place if you think about it. In your home, if you think about the conversations and the things that have taken place around the table, you will see it as an opportunity for those, everyone who's around, to feel valued, to feel honored. It may be the table that you have sat around that you've had discussions about where you'd go to college, where you'd go to school, what job you would take, who you would marry, maybe what bills would get paid this month because there wasn't quite enough to go around. Again, it's these conversations that remind us that we are a contributor to our family. It's the table of the church that reminds us that we are all a part, we are all responsible for the church that we come into. We don't just come in on Sunday mornings, maybe occasionally join a small group and that's it. But no, we are constantly part of the DNA, what what God is calling us into. You know, there's different rules of different tables. I don't know if you guys are aware of this, but for those of us who are married or have been married, it is most evident. I grew up in a in a family that my mom was very clear, there weren't a lot of unspoken rules about this, it was very clear, that we were not gonna talk about politics, we were not gonna talk about things that would create division, that that was one time, that was one place in the day at dinner where it was gonna be peaceful. It was going to be encouraging, it was gonna be supportive. That was just the rule, right or wrong, that's just how it was, and, and growing, th- uh, growing up and, and as adolescents and my, and my brother, they, that was just a peaceful time and, and she was not going to have conflict at the table. I realized the rules were very different when I got married. I uh, remembered my wife, I, I didn't spend any time doing that, but at some point we'll talk, I'm, I'm married and uh, I have two kids, wonderful kids, I'm incredibly blessed. But... Uh, when we were dating, I realized that those, that was different. The rules were different. Where they had a deep desire to be authentic in all they did. And so they would use sarcasm. They would kind of poke the bear. They, they would get loud. And, and I just remember going, oh my goodness, I got to eat and get out of here. I mean, it was just, it was very foreign. Right? You're laughing because you know what I'm talking about, Right? But it was a reminder that we all have these different rules. I mean, we all have, and so when we think about a table, you and I come to this place, you and I come to church with very different expectations of of what that looks like. As a a child, I I remember I was the oldest grandchild on my mother's side, uh, so my grandparents, maternal grandparents, and uh, my grandmother would, she is what I vision as the the typical grandmother, and I know that's not the case, it's our experience. She was about 5'2", she had white hair, and she wore a bun. And uh, she would make bread every two weeks. And so I would go there, and, and I would sit there, and I would have bread and jam, or whatever she, you know, she would be making, cinnamon rolls. And as I reflect back upon that, I, I recall, I, I, I'm just very aware of the fact that what she was doing is she was providing unconditional love. She was providing an opportunity for me literally and figuratively, to have a place at the table. And so when I think about a table, I think about love, unconditional love. 
When I think about a table, I also think about a young boy, second, third, fourth grade, who went to, a, went to private school and had great teachers, but they did not have the background and the training to be able to identify learning disabilities. And if you're 35 or 40 or older, if you're younger, it may be before your time. Friday, Friday we would have spelling tests. And you'd have 20 words, right? And Thursday night, I remember sitting at that table, which felt like hours. I mean, it was probably only an hour, but it felt like hours. And I remember trying to study, trying to prepare for these spelling tests. I remember my parents being there trying to help me. And no matter how well I thought I was going to do, how optimistic I thought I would be, by the time the test came around and I got the results, it was never what I had hoped. Bryce struggled with dyslexia. So when I think of a table, I think about a young boy who had difficulty feeling like he, like he measured up. I also think about, as I mentioned, my family, our, our extended family. Whether you went to church or not, you all came to my grandparents' house on Sunday. And as the family grew, you would just simply keep, you would add another leaf. Well, at some point, there's no more leaves, so my grandparents, they were too frugal, they weren't going to buy another table, they would just add a piece of plywood, and the table expanded. And I remember on one of those occasions, my grandmother was sharing with the family that her, fa her father, so my great-grandfather, had passed. And so for the first time I saw my grandmother cry, she, she took her hands and put them over her face, and she began to weep. And as the family sat around, no one tried to interject or try to say the right things. They just let her be in a safe space. But I remember as a, I remember as a child that being very odd. And what I learned was there are times when we in the church, when we in our immediate family, we just have to let people be and where they're at. And we, can't, we don't have the right words. We can't always solve it. But when I think about a table, I think about what it means to at times feel helpless when we can't always come to the rescue of a family member or a friend. As you sit here this morning, I, I am guessing that you are thinking, you have different examples of what conversations took, around, took place around the table that you grew up in. As I mentioned before, it may have been a decision about college. It could have been that you ended up having to share with family or friends that you had gotten pregnant or you had gotten someone pregnant and, and it wasn't the way that you had planned. It may be that you broke up in a, a relationship. Maybe it was the death of a family member, financial struggles. Maybe it was sharing a diagnosis. But it could be that you were able around the table to share with family and friends that after saving for three years, you were able to go out the Midwest and visit family, or you were able to go to Florida, go to Disney World. For there's lots of emotions. There's mixed emotions when we think of the imagery of a table. When you think about a table, there, there are many that we sit around in our sphere of influence. The table en enables us to build intimacy, but it also requires that we make space. Do you feel like you have a place at the table. For it means that we belong, it means that we are accepted, it means that we have purpose. What does the imagery of a table bring up for you? Does it elicit memories that are positive or those that are sad and, and those that you wish you could forget? So there are tables that are open, that's everyone's invited, you feel welcomed, and then there's closed tables where maybe we don't feel so welcome. It's, a, it's an interesting thing our experience around a table can lead into adult life. Now, you tell me, oh, I'm not sure I believe that. Well, just take a little trip down to middle school. Go back to, think about what it was in middle school. Did you ever transfer to a school during the, the high school years or middle school or elementary? You knew, an, you knew immediately whether you were welcome or not. No one had to tell you whether you were accepted to sit at the table. Think about as an adult or in your workplace, are you encouraged, invited to be a part of what every, everyone else is doing, or do you end up going to your car and sitting and eating lunch by yourself because it's just too painful to watch everyone else go and have fun and, and you're by yourself? What about those of you who are in a different stage of your life and, and you're, you're feeding into, you are 
giving back to the younger generations, and yet you were feeling lonely, and maybe your spouse has passed. Maybe, maybe you're trying to find what your place is, and after faithful servant, service all these years, you're trying to figure out what is your purpose, where is your place. Dan White is quoted by saying this, the renewal of the church will not start on stages, it'll start around tables. You see, Jesus actually had a few things to say about the table. I don't know if you realize this, but Jesus came to disrupt who was able to sit at the table. It was those religious leaders that had him killed because he was shifting who was able to sit at the table. You know, he, he was telling us that there's no longer a distinction between Jew and Gentile, rich and poor, educated, and those who are not educated. And yet we still find ourselves struggling with some of these challenges. Whether we look at political affiliation, whether you are part of more traditional or contemporary, whether we're talking about gender, race, ethnicity, or economic status. We make assumptions on single tweets or how someone looks or how someone dresses or what car they drive, certainly their physical appearance. I'm not judging. I have a middle school daughter. I, I do that. And yet, we, as we travel through Scripture, we are reminded that some of our assumptions, some of these beliefs that we hold need to be in check. I think as we go through a few of these stories, and I thank uh, you for all in the back for helping put these up. I, I don't have a lot of slides, but I have some verses that we're going uh, to have up here, and if you want to find them, the majority will be in Luke, uh, but we should have them on the screen. But we're going to start, as we talk about a few of these examples of, of the table, I, I think we, are, we first might go to the idea of the Ark of the Covenant in Exodus 25. It talks about how it was to be built the overlay and where the gold should be and where the ring should be on the corners, what types of plates and bowls should be on there, what type of pitcher, the bread, the, uh, the wine. Exodus 25, 30 states it this way. Put the bread of the presence on the table before me at all times. I don't know about you, but I love the smell of fresh bread. And this aroma was to remind God's people that he was giving them their daily need. He was, he was providing for them daily. Leviticus talks about there being 12 loaves, which in Israel you would know that the 12 loaves represented what? The, the 12 tribes. For what I believe God is sharing with us is that there was room for everyone at his table. There was always a place at the table of the Lord. The next example, and this is in Luke 14, 7 through 14, it's one of my favorite parables. And Jesus is speaking to you both as the guest and the host. He's speaking to us individually as well as corporately. So here Jesus is speaking to you and I as the guest. He says, when someone invites you to a wedding feast, do not take the place of honor for a person more distinguished than you may have been invited and so the host will invite both of you, and he will come and say, give this person your seat. Then humiliated, you will have to take the least important seat. But when you are invited, take the lowest place, so that when the host comes, he will say, friend, move up closer. Then you will be honored in the presence of all the guests. For all those who, are exalt, who exalt themselves will be humbled, and all those who humble themselves will be exalted. Now Jesus is speaking to you and I as the host. When you give a luncheon or dinner, do not invite your friends or your brothers or your sisters or your relatives or your rich neighbors. For if you do, they may invite you back, and then you'll simply be repaid. But when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind, and you will be blessed. Although they cannot repay you, you will be repaid at the resurrection of righteousness. There's really two examples here. I mean, there's more, but the two that I think are the most obvious for you and I is we need to be very mindful of how we come across, not only of our own needs, and that's certainly important. We need to be valued. We need to know that we are giving ourselves value and, and respect, but there's a piece where we are putting others before ourselves. We live in a culture that is so focused on what I want and, and my objective that oftentimes we end up forgetting. We spend less time on what is the need of others. Do we put others before ourselves? 
The other reminder, I believe that Jesus not only is telling us individually, but corporately as a church, is to not do things in an attempt to be repaid. I think that, I'll say this in that I don't believe that this is intentional, but I think for those of us who have been in the church for a long time, who have been involved in ministry, that if we're not careful, we can do things with this assumption that we're doing it, and yet they certainly should come through to the church. They certainly should come through the door. We're going to do a trunk or treat, or we're going to do something for Easter, or we're going to support a family. We want to do Operation Christmas Child, and so then the community will see, and they'll just automatically start coming in. I mean, how could they not? And I think if we're not careful, we base what we do in ministry off of what the, what the response is or what we get back. Now, that does not mean, please understand, that does not mean that there are times that we need to evaluate the ministries we're doing and are they effective for the Lord. But I just think it's really important that you and I are mindful that the ministries that we do may not result in anyone coming through, back through the doors. But again, we're being the feet of Jesus. We, we are doing, we are providing tangible expressions of Christ's love. I, I resonate with this because I love, if, as you get to know me, I love throwing parties. I love everything about it. I love inviting. I love going to Costco and getting the big carts and going home and preparing. And the best part is right before everyone shows up. Pastor Cameron, we used to do this. When I was at Crossroads, we'd just do an all church. Everyone, if you want to come, you just come. And we might have 200 people. I mean, it, it, was, it was just fun. so people would start coming. They would park in the driveway. They'd park on the grass. They'd start coming. And they would bring their bowls, and it would be uh, crock pots and casserole dishes and, and jello salad, lots of jello salad. You know, all. But what is it? It was this shared experience. You start asking, well, this is what my great aunt Edna, this is her recipe, or this is what we've done. Or, and you know how it is. When you're eating, you start sharing the fellowship. But I think it's a reminder for all of us that, yes, it's important as, as we invite others to, but, uh, to the table, but what is our objective? What are we trying? Are we trying to get something out of it? Or are we doing it just because we feel like we, this is what it means to be faithful servants of Christ? Oh, Luke chapter 14, verse 15, we see another table lesson. When one of... When one of those at the table heard him, they said, Jesus, blessed is the one who eats at the feast in the kingdom of God. Jesus replied, a certain man was preparing a great banquet and invited many guests. At the time of the banquet, the man sent his servants to tell those who had been invited, come, everyone, it is ready. While they all alike began to make excuses. Well, I've just purchased a field. I need to go work it. I've just purchased five yoke of oxen. I need to go work them. I just got married, and I can't come. The servant came back and reported this to the master. Then the owner of the house became angry and ordered the servants, go out quickly to the streets and alleys in the town and bring in the poor, the crippled, the blind, and the lame. Sir, the servant said, what you have ordered has been done and there is still room. Then the master told the servant, go out to the roads and the country lane and compel them to come in so that my house will be full. I tell you, not one of those who was invited will taste of my banquet. A man has invited all that he knows and there's excuses. I need to... Take care of the field. I need to go work the oxen. I just got married. Maybe in today's day we may use, we probably don't have oxen that we're working, but, you know, it's been really busy. I, I just need a down day. I, I would love to fellowship with God's people. I'd love to come on Sunday or and join a small group, but you know what? This age and stage, we're just going to have to, we're just going to have to pass and, and we'll re-engage later. See, what's interesting about this parable is and it wasn't that these were not legitimate reasons, but if we're not careful, we can begin to put, and I'll tell you, folks, I, I have to be very mindful of this. I can find lots of things to do in place of spending time with the Lord, and I have to make sure that, that I'm mindful of that. We all have to make sure we're mindful. And, and here's the historical relevance for you. If you were invited to a party, there would be two invitations. The first invitation came out to say, would you be able, would you be willing to come? And if you acknowledge, yes, I can come, then the second invitation is what we have here, and that's when people are refusing. Now, here is the, the significance for you and I as well. 
the, the guests in Jesus' story insulted the host by making excuses when, they, when he offered the second invitation. In Israel's history, God's first invitation came through Moses and the prophets. And, and the religious leaders, they had accepted that. They had accepted that they were God's chosen people. But what they hadn't done is they hadn't accepted the second invitation, which was Jesus, God's son. See, God has invited the entire world, and, and his kingdom has arrived, and, and we need to be ready for it. Friends, the, the next table example or lesson I think is probably one of the most well-known stories in the Bible, whether you attend church or you claim to be a follower of Christ or not, and that is of the parable, or the prodigal son, excuse me. Here we have an example of a, a father who is, who is at the table, and he has intimacy with his kids, and at one point the youngest son says, I'm going to break off this intimacy, this shared experience. I want what is mine. I even want what is not mine. I shouldn't have been given, but I want it, and I'm going to go do my own thing. And so the father finds himself sitting day after day at the table with an empty chair. Now, for you, this may ring true in that you have a son or daughter who may not be walking with the Lord now. You may have a son or daughter and, and that there is a disconnect or you don't have a good relationship with. And so it may, you may find that this is extra painful and yet we see that in the time when the son is far off and he is coming back home, the father sees him and he runs to him, puts sandals on his feet, a robe around him, a ring on his finger, and the son is already ready to have the excuses why he shouldn't even be sitting at the table. And the father says, I think what you and I would say if it were your kids, you will always be my daughter. You will always be my son. There is nothing that you can do to separate and so the son comes back and he's sitting at the table and yet we are then left at the end of the story with a father pleading with his eldest son, won't you even come in and sit and, and see your brother? And, this, and the son says, no, I mean, I, you won't throw a party for me. And we, again, we see at the end of the story the father pleading as there is another empty chair at the table. Finally, my friends, I think about the Lord's Supper and as we gather around the table, and this is much more than just simply symbolism. It is an intentional desire for you and I, individually as well as collectively, to be a part of a shared practice that has gone through the ages as we join the cloud of witnesses for a shared practice. As Jesus was preparing to die with all the fear and sadness, you can imagine in that room with his disciples, and they may be talking about what happened that day or the last couple days or what the plan is for tomorrow. They didn't fully understand the significance. And as he's looking around, Peter's over there, John's over there, Andrew's over there. We are reminded that the sacrifice that he provided is not cheap. It's not a cheap grace, but it's a means of grace. This incarnation of the ultimate shared experience is inviting us as his children to step into the experiences and the spaces that the Holy Spirit is speaking into your life and mine. See, Jesus is waiting at the table, and it's not for who's in and who's not. He's not looking around to see if anyone better comes through the door. No, he wants to spend time with you. He is calling you to sit right next to him. In a world that seems chaotic and full of challenges and, and busyness, he just wants to spend some time with you to hear his voice. And friends, I, I, uh, I, I'm a part of this that I think in our, our world we can get caught up in all the busyness. But do we find time to spend time with, with our Heavenly Father? See, the Father stands... And he looks afar, and he's waiting for you to come. If you've yet to make a commitment to follow Jesus Christ, I would encourage you to do so. For he continues to stay and, and plead to come into relationship with him. For some of you, you may be in a situation that others have felt in this room, I'm sure, where maybe you don't feel quite as close to the Lord as, as you once did. And, and you know it's because it's the time that you haven't been able to just sit and be with the Heavenly Father. You see, this is going to require that you make place at your table for the Lord. 
I'm often convicted and that some of the, the reasons that I don't hear the Lord is not because he's not speaking, it's because I'm not listening. It's hard to even drive to work or drive to church without turning on the radio or a podcast. All these things are fine. But does it take you away from hearing, hearing the Lord? For when I think about love, I think about a table. This morning as the worship team comes and as we pray, if you need to take time, I'm not sure what the tradition is here or what you do, and, and, uh, but I, I know that there would be time to pray. And I would encourage you to do that, whether you need that renewal, just the, to sense the Lord in a new way, or whether this would be a first-time commitment. I know that there's those who would walk and, and be with you. It will require, as I mentioned, that we make place at our table for the Lord. Are you getting enough time around the table with those you love? Church family, I hope that we get this table thing right. Jesus got in a lot of trouble for those he included at the table. But I believe that the church is at its best when we get the table thing right. Heavenly Father, Lord, you know what's going on in the lives of each individual that, that walk through the doors. You know what's going on in the life of those who are watching online. You know the struggles. You know the joys. You know the fear. You know the anxiety. You know the depression, Lord. And we just ask as a collective body, we, we just pray and intercede for one another, knowing that you want to do a work in our lives. You want to radically transform who we are. That as we continue to grow in you, that it's not a, a one-time thing and, and then we're good for the rest of the time. But no, you've called us into faithful walking, a faithful commitment to you. Reveal to us, Lord, areas in our life that we need a light shown. Maybe there's areas that, that we just pass over and, and, and we just need to feel the Holy Spirit convicting us in, a, in an area. Maybe we need to feel the support knowing that we need to continue moving forward, Lord. Wherever individuals are, whatever's going on for each individual here, Lord, I just pray that you would be real and significant in, a, in a, maybe a new way this week than they have felt in a long time. I pray for those that may be here and are, are struggling or maybe unsure about a, a walk with the Lord and what that will mean and, and if they have measured up and if they are good enough and, and what that what that might look like. Lord, I would just ask that you would use the, the people here, this family here in Hagerstown, to show that, that we don't have to fix ourselves up before we come here, that, that you welcome us just as we are. Help us, Lord, as, as we think about the situations and the, uh, the experiences and the individuals that we will connect with this week. Help us through our time of devotions or our time of prayer that you would prepare our hearts to speak into what you are already calling us to. Lord, we know that your provenient grace goes out in front of us. And so when you call us into conversations, when you call us into situations that, that we're not just the first on the scene, Lord, you've already been there and you're working in their lives. I pray for those who are, have just been faithful servants of you for years and years and years and and are finding themselves in a, in a place, in a season where life can be more challenging. As they think about health concerns and, and those things that are going on, Lord, I just ask that you would uh, remind them that if nothing else they can pray, they can pray for the next generation. They can pray for those who will walk through the store, or maybe who won't walk through the store, but through the acts and the kindness of what's done here will be revealed your love for them. We give this day to you and, and give all of our life to you, Lord, in your name. Amen. I invite you all to stand again this morning as we close the service with the old rugged cross. Oh.
You all may have a seat. Um, thank you, Dr. Norm, for coming and for, for the message that you shared with us. And worship team, thank you for serving us. And um, for those in the back, thanks for doing that. Um, we also, um, I, I don't know, I, I'm going to do something a little bit different uh, this morning as we conclude. Um, I'm actually going to invite our church board members. Um, those who are here, if you could come forward and maybe if you could just kind of stand up here. Um, if you, you want to come now and uh, just be up here. Um, so Dr. Norm uh, preached this morning about, about a table, right? About tables and the tables that we surround ourselves. Um, well, this Tuesday night, um, this board here, the board that you, you've elected, um, our leaders, um, and, and you know you know probably all of these as you've seen them in different ministry roles in different places, but um, they have, uh, they're going to be meeting with, uh, with Dr. Bowser, um, our, our district superintendent, and, and Dr. Bowser is actually going to be here um, with us to preach next, next Sunday, and so he will kind of be laying out the whole process, and um, so you'll, you'll want to make sure that you're, you're there for that. Um, but our, our church board is going to be meeting on Tuesday to, to kind of talk through this process. And so I thought it would be appropriate uh, today to be able to just pray over them. So I w- maybe um, if, you, if you're able to, maybe uh, if you guys can kneel just at the altars. And then I'm going to invite um, anyone who's willing and able to come and just surround our church board members. And we're just going just gonna to pray a blessing over them as they're um, seeking the direction for for our church, and so I'd invite you to come. Come now, um, those who who can, who can come and stand, and, and you can lay hands, lay hands on any one of these board members. But we want to we want to lift them up, because there's a sometimes there's a lot of pressure on on that, and so we want we want to make sure that they know that they are not alone, <laughs> that they have a God that's with them, but that they have a church family here that is around them. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, God, we thank you for your goodness and for your faithfulness, for how you have led our church over, over these years, God. We have been a blessed con- You have mightily used this congregation and these people that have come through all these years to encourage and to be a blessing to each other and to this community. And God, we just thank you for all of the, the leaders that have that have gone before, Lord, that you have built this foundation upon, God. And, and Lord, it has all been to seek you, to, to honor you, God, to, to worship you, uh, but Lord, to also be a blessing to this community and to the world that you have placed us in, God. And so, Lord, we thank you uh, for the fruit that has come and for the leaders that have gone before. And, Lord, uh, right now, we just want to pray for our, our current leaders, God, and for those that are going to be gathering uh, this week just to, just to pray, to discern where you're leading, to talk through just all of the different things and what this is going to look like. Lord, we just pray, Lord, that your Holy Spirit would be the one that would Lord, I pray, Lord, that you would speak so clearly, Lord, and that you would um, just lead and use each of these uh, board members, Lord, as, as they uh, step into maybe some new roles, um, Lord, as they, as they serve our church maybe in a more upfront way to some of them, um, Lord, as they're asked to do different things that might uh, stretch them. I pray that, Lord, um, that song that we sang earlier, Lord, we need you. Lord, I pray that we would continue to look to you, and that in the times that might feel overwhelming, and the times that we are left uncertain, or um, and we're as we're waiting to hear from you of where you're leading us next, Lord, I just pray, Lord, that we would look to you, that you would continue to pray to you, and that we would uh, seek your your guidance and direction. God, I, I thank you for this church body that you've given us, and Lord, I pray that we would just step up, Lord, and that um, we would all do our part um, in this interim time, God. And Lord, um, we just, we are excited also for what you're going to do next. And so, God, would you
you lead us, and would you be the God who goes before us and who uh, just helps us and provides for us, provides for other needs. And Lord, help us to look out, help us to, um, to try something new, help us to look for ways that we can continue to be a blessing, to be a light, to invite uh, those that are uh, in our circles, that we work with, that we uh, are neighbors with, help us to invite them uh, to come be a part of this as well. But Lord, we, we thank you for these these uh, leaders that you have given to us, Lord, and we just pray that you would just guide us and that you would help us. And we pray all this in Jesus' name. And together we say, Amen. 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 All right, you all are dismissed. May God bless each and every one of you. If you need anything at all this week, please reach out to us. We love you. God bless. How are you, Charles? Yeah.